This is a Marantz 2245. That was brought to me because the controls are dirty. It has crackles in the sound, a couple burned out lamps, and the vellum paper is yellowed, which makes the dial face more green. It was manufactured in the mid 70s, and as the name suggests, it puts out 45 watts per channel to two channels. It's one of the more sought after Marantz models and has that classic look and gyro touch tuning wheel. It's a little bit dusty inside. Nothing a quick vacuum and wipe down with an anti-static brush can't fix. In order to protect this lovely faceplate and also access some of the other controls, I need to remove the faceplate. First off, I'm gonna take some quick dry contact cleaner and spray it in here. This just flushes out the pot, removes any dust, etc. but it doesn't leave any residue. The next step is gonna to be to use a little bit of Deoxit F100 and look at the wiper by turning these around until you see it in there. It rubs on the graphite contact. Next up, I need to pull off this dial face so that we can replace the vellum paper. It's held on by double-sided tape around the edge and two screws. You can use a razor blade to cut the tape. Just don't let it dive in too far or you might scratch the black off of the back of the dial face. Easy peasy. Look at how yellow that is. I installed warm white diffused LEDs that will give a very similar color to the original lamps on the dial face. As for the stereo and input indicator bulbs, I cut the leads down real short with a resistor in line with each one, then sanded the lenses down to disperse the light more. I wasn't happy with the warmth of the LEDs, so I added orange film to the input lights and a dot of red paint to the stereo indicators. I also replaced the two lamps behind the tuning meters, and I'm really happy with how this dial face turned out. Now that all of the issues are fixed, it's time for some improvements. And the first one is... Oh man, those look good. In order to replace those speaker terminals, I had to remove this amp, and then so I figured I would just rebuild it while I was in there. And these are all the parts that I took out. I also added flyback diodes to the output transistors and completed the same work on the left channel amp. Next up is this nice little power supply and protection circuit. And while I was rebuilding the power supply, I also replaced the main filter caps. That's 17 parts in total. Next up is the phono amp for your turntable. I noticed that the square wave looked pretty bad and the sine wave appeared to have a little bit of crossover distortion. Like that, I got a bunch of caps replaced on the phono stage. This is all that I replaced. And the square wave looks nice and clean. The last board to rebuild is the pre and tone control board. And just like that, I replaced 21 parts. And this is the treble control, working great. The mid range, and this is the bass. Very nice. One of the last things I need to swap out is the power switch. These tend to fail. And just like that, I got the new switch in there. With all of the electrical work completed, it's safe to reinstall the faceplate. All told, I replaced 94 parts on this unit. And it's all done, man, what a beauty.